recording paused on the screen too. All right. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Looks like we are streaming live on YouTube. Glad to have you here today. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Ellen Wynn. I am an independent agent and team leader out here in the field. So um, I'm an independent agent, just like all of you guys are. If you're a guest, welcome. Uh, this is a great time to be involved with the AC, and we've got some great services that we're really helping people with. Um, I've been tasked with the opportunity, the opportunity, I say, to um, to lead these healthcare Zooms on Tuesday. So we've got the ability to talk about healthcare and the RX program because they both fit under our healthcare suite. So um, today, if you don't already have a pen and paper, please grab pen and paper. The best way for you to take advantage of what we're talking about here each week is for you to make notes, right? Comes in, write it down on paper. You've got something that you can go back and refer to. I have a three ring binder that is full of notes from all of the different meetings that I have attended with DAC, with all of our services, things that I take notes on on what I'm going to be covering as a team leader. And if you'll do that, then you'll have a great reference tool to go back to. So today I want to get started talking about belief. And I'm going to pull up a slide share here, put a few slides together. And let's see if I can find the right one. Give me one second. There we go. Ask you a question. All right. Are you seeing belief on the screen there, Morgan? Not yet. We're not seeing a screen share just yet. How about now? There we go. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about belief. And I want to ask you a question. Have, have you gone and seen a movie recently that was really, really good? And if so, did you tell someone about it? Or is there a favorite restaurant that you really love going to? And when someone asks for a re recommendation of where to go, are you one of the first ones to volunteer that information? Guys, that is what belief in our services is all about. When you have something good that is worth recommending, then you want to tell people about it. And I can assure you from my personal experience that what we have here is worth recommending and we need to be sharing it with people because they need what we have. So um, think about your belief. And I'm, I'm going to recap something that I went through with you last week, and that is some case studies. And I put them together in a little bit cleaner slideshow so I can go through these real quickly. But if you look at DAC quickly in our healthcare platform, uh, we have a comprehensive benefits platform. And you want to let that sink in because we really have a comprehensive healthcare solution for individuals, for small business owners, big business owners, and on our flat fee RX program as well. But you have to believe that we have a great solution for people. So uh, the 59-year-old single male, non-smoker, good health that I did a quote with and it did that example last week. Remember, in 2022, he was paying $800 a month buying his health care through healthcare.gov. In 2023, that rate jumped up to $1,000. In 2024, his renewal rate was going to be $1,265, right? So when I had the opportunity to walk him through a quote, we came back in at $527 a month. He signed up. He started January 1st enrollment date, and we are now helping him save $738 a month. $8,856 a year. And that's real hard cash that he's keeping in his account instead of needlessly spending it with uh, his previous health insurance provider, right? Next case study that I covered briefly last week, the husband and kids where they were on traditional insurance plan and it was cheaper for them to buy two separate plans uh, for their total cost, where the husband and kids were paying $15.97 a month, the wife's plan was $7.35 combined, they were paying $2,332 a month. I walked them through a quote on our DAC uh, healthcare plan, and we brought back in $1,344 as their price, 
And now they're saving $988 a month or $11,856 a year. Now, these guys are small business owners. What kind of impact do you think that makes on their monthly finances? They can be investing that in a college fund since they've got two kids. Uh, they could be planning their dream vacation, whatever they want to do. But that's money that's staying in their bank account instead of, again, needlessly being spent with a big health care provider. Right. Um, I want to go through the benefits. So that's part of your belief is believing what we have to offer and believing the cost savings benefit there. You really have to understand that our programs work like insurance, appear, act like insurance when you're visiting the doctor, even though it's not insurance. It's legally a share plan. But to the end consumer, it's going to feel just like their old traditional insurance plan did. But it's going to be lower out-of-pocket cost. It's going to be uh, on the monthly. It's going to be uh, a lower maximum that they have to meet. Jake shared with us a few weeks ago that the average max out-of-pocket on American households with insurance is $9,400. That's the average max out-of-pocket, the highest max out of pocket that we have here with our plans is 5,000 and people can choose 1,000, 2,500 or 5,000. So we're saving them there. When you look at max out of pocket, that is where their financial risk lies. Okay. Um, that financial risk lies with max out of pocket that they would spend. And that's on in network coverages. I think I touched last week that a lot of times people on healthcare.gov plans they don't realize that if they're on a state-sponsored plan, they may not have in-network coverage if they're traveling outside of their home state. So write that down. That's a huge risk. And that's where a lot of people can get into trouble. They're traveling, they're visiting someone in another state or even out of country. They have a medical emergency. They end up having to seek medical care. And then they find themselves getting coverage somewhere that, that's not covered in network or not covered at all because of the premium or the policy that they have in place. Our plans cover people in all uh, all 50 states as well as when they're traveling globally. So again, back to belief, you need to understand the value that is baked into our plans. And that's why I have on the screen here a screenshot of my app. If you notice in the top left-hand corner, it says EW because that's my personal Clearwater Benefits app. I'm a user of the service. It, it is my health care now instead of what I had previously. Before I enrolled with this program, I had pieced together a couple of plans. And a lot of people are doing that. I had an indemnity plan that would cover major medical up to $500,000. So I was really at risk if I had a major incident that cost over $500,000 um, or cancer or something on those lines with that indemnity policy. And I was paying separately for that along with a PPO on a separate plan. Now I've got everything under one umbrella here with our Clearwater benefits, but I just wanted to show you this screenshot. So when someone enrolls as a member, they're going to receive an email with their member ID and a link to um, download the app for Apple or Google. They'll download the health wallet, which is what it's called. And once they download the health wallet, they're going to have all of these different tabs when they open up their phone. So at the top, we've got the ID card. Uh, it shows the front and back so they can click on that. It immediately pops up a digital version showing their member ID. Uh, customer service, where billing goes, all of that is included. Find a provider right on their phone. They can click that link and search for in-network providers in the PHCS network. The benefits and coverage are laid out there if they have any questions, but the ID card also really shows the benefits. It shows what, what the copay is if they're in-network or out-of-network, just like a traditional insurance card would, okay? Um, the mental health, and this is something that adds tremendous um, value to our program. Uh, I've mentioned this before, our program is not just about the price. When you look at the overall value, our price point and the value of services that are included, the limited liability on financial risk with the max out of pocket being so low as $1,000, $2,500 and $5,000, we've really got a tremendous program here. But mental health, this is one of the one of the key benefits that I like to offer when I'm talking to a family because teenagers today, 
Uh, it's great if they've got a professional that they can confide in. And if they're in a family plan, they have the ability to reach out and talk to uh, uh, someone on their mental health team through Talkspace once a month, 30 minutes a month. And then they can talk with that same person or get a different benefits advisor. And once they've made a connection with someone, they can even send text messages throughout the month without it going over their 30 minute allotted time. So um, Talkspace is a tremendous value. We have telemedicine through Lyric and also at the bottom of the app there, you see a maze. I'm gonna go through those benefits in a minute because we haven't really touched on a maze that much. We've talked about it briefly, but I wanna point out um, some key points that are in the flyer in our agent resource center. And then we have um, needs if someone has a need where it's not it's outside of their day-to-day -day coverage and their co-pays where they have taken an ambulance ride, visited an emergency room or hospitalized or they're needing surgery. That's where they're going to click on needs to submit that. There's an FAQ there, billing information, and then of course, a maze. When you click on a maze, it's going to give instructions to download the Amaze app, which is separate. Um, I have personally used a maze. I, I had COVID as a month or so ago, and Amaze was my first go-to when I wasn't feeling well. Uh, I reached out to them. I immediately got a doctor on the line. She talked me through my symptoms. We confirmed that it was COVID. Aside from testing positive on a home test kit, um, we went through the symptoms, and she gave me some options on treatment, right? And one of those was for her to call in a medication for me, which she did. And I was able to get started on medication uh, within about three hours after getting on the phone with her. The wait time was waiting for the pharmacy to get the prescription ready, right? So let's talk about Amaze real quick. And um, this, is, this is from the flyer in the Agent Resource Center. So to get to your Agent Resource Center, you log in to your DAC back office through the footer of the page there, Agent Login. And then on the left menu, there's a link to the Agent Resource Center. When you click on that, it opens up on getting started. But once you have opened that, you also have a menu across the top of the page. If you're looking at it on a PC, um, you want to go to the Healthcare tab. And there's a drop down to take you to HealthShare and the RX plans, right? And when you click on the HealthShare plan, you're going to see this flyer for a maze. Uh, so three, pay, three approaches to managing your cost care with a maze, uh, preventing illness and injury by having healthcare education, self-assessment, chronic care management. If you're injured, have any type of illness going on, you can call them and talk to them and they'll help you determine whether you need to actually go to an in-person visit or whether you need to go get an x-ray. If they feel you need to go get an x-ray, they can order an x-ray for you and have you go directly to a facility without having to pay for an urgent care visit or without having to pay for an emergency room visit. They can send you to an imaging center locally that'll be cost effective. Go ahead and get that x-ray done and then they can read um, the radiologist reports and determine what your next steps are. So that is kind of an urgent care built into the Amaze platform. Um, I also, on Amaze, I sat in on a webinar, a 30-minute webinar that Amaze offers to our members that really breaks down in detail how the program works. And write this down. This is a really cool benefit. If you have a maze through our Clearwater benefit, then um, it even allows you to add members, family members that may not be on your healthcare plan. So imagine you've got um, a husband and wife and, and one of the spouses is on um, Medicare and the other one is on our ClearShare plan, right? They could go in and add the husband to amaze even though they're not covered on clear share but be able to have a consultation on the phone so that that family member that's on a different insurance plan or on medicare or whatever plan they're on they could even use this as virtual doctor care and um, i think that's amazing that they have done that so their name they're they're definitely appropriately named the second page of that is uh, amaze off also offers some mental health consultations there. So not only do we have the talk space through our app, but we also have a maze. So we've got two different platforms for virtual care 
and mental health care. So um, just wanted to cover those to give you a visual of that. Let me get off of screen share here and go back. And I want to address some questions. We have the DAC 50 and 50 group that Harlequin had the idea to start that. Um, we've, we've had a lot of people join that, but we just renamed that, getting more in, in tune with the direction that we all need to be going in. And we've renamed that group to a day and 10 in play, to a day, 10 in play. So if you want to join the group, do DAC to a day, 10 in play. And what we mean by that is that you should be having two new conversations a day with people that are prospective clients, whether it be our health share or whether it be our RX platform, okay? Nothing is gonna happen. I read a, a quote the other day, <laughs> said, nothing works if you don't work. That's the quote. And I'm going, oh yeah, that's perfect. And that's true. Nothing is going to work if you don't work, right? So if you don't go to work and start talking to clients about our program and about what we have to offer, then this program is not going to work for you. The AC is not going to work for you. So you got to be willing to do that with two a day and 10 in place. So two new conversations a day, at least, and then having at least 10 prospect prospects in play that are actively saying they're interested, right? And these these two a day need to be getting to two conversations where someone is interested in possibly getting a quote or interested in on the RX program, maybe looking up to see if their medications are covered on our list, on our free formulary. Um, those type conversations, not just saying, hey, I reached out to two people and not knowing whether they're interested or not. Two conversations that um, someone is possibly interested in moving forward and finding out more, right? If it's a healthcare client and they want more, what have I taught you? You want to go in and say, well, hey, if, if you've got about three or four minutes, I can get you a quote right now. And you walk them through that quote. You do the quote with them after you filled out the form on your DAC page. You do the quote. Um, once you have completed a quote and they are in the quote system, now they're in the Clearwater system and being followed up with, with emails, text messages, uh, educational emails coming out to them. So there's a drip system there that's helping you along the way. On the RX, if they're interested, say, well, hey, yeah, I'm spending more than $20 a month. Then um, go through and say, well, hey, if you've got a few minutes, if you don't mind sharing with me what prescriptions you're on, we can look them up together. And you can take that proactive lead on that rather than just sending your link and hoping that they sign up, okay? So two a day and 10 in play. Now, um, I wanna talk about who to approach. And I was have, I've had several conversations with people in the insurance space. And this first conversation that I wanna talk about is someone that not only could be a prospective client for you, a prospective referral partner, but also could be a prospective affiliate to join you in the business. And that is people that sell Medicare, okay? Medicare agents already have a base of clients that are spending money on Medicare or looking for Medicare. And yesterday I was visiting with friends that are, that are here, um, staying a couple of days with me. They have been in the Medicare space for years. And they said, you know, as I'm talking to our Medicare clients, they're always asking, um, can you help us with health insurance? My daughter needs this. My son needs that. And they've always got calls coming in. So if you're talking to people that are already in that space of some type of insurance, but not necessarily health insurance, then they can be a great referral partner or may see the opportunity to come on as an affiliate. So make a note of that and think of who you know that is in the Medicare space. Another great contact for you are insurance agents that do property and casualty only. A lot of them are licensed in healthcare, but they don't want to fool with healthcare because healthcare can be very tedious. They have to go and look up and search and, and do references on quotes. So a lot of them do not do the health care side of insurance. So property and casualty are great. They have a network of other property and casualty agents. You can be that go-to referral, or again, they can be a great um, affiliate partner with you. If you show them how they can start, instead of sending their healthcare 
request out to other referral partners that can say, hey, I've, I've got a quote tool here. I'll get you in the system and then get you connected with one of our benefits team. What, what quote tool is that? DACHealthcare.com, right? And then the quote tool after they filled out the form and scheduled with the benefits team over at Clearwater by walking through what I showed you two weeks ago. So um, those are great partners that you can reach out to. Um, other than that, I talk to everybody about healthcare. It's a great conversation starter. I had posted um, a message in our two a day and 10 in play group. And I said, what would you like for me to talk about this week? And I had a couple of questions posted there. So I want to read those and give an answer um, to those questions. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can read my fine print. One of those First one was overcoming objections about healthcare coverage and having to wait until open enrollment comes back around. Now, that one, um, if you're talking to someone about healthcare and they're talking about open enrollment, maybe they're they're already locked into a plan. If they're in a group, uh, they may need to wait until open enrollment comes around. But if they're on an individual plan and just individual healthcare, then chances are they can make a switch off of that at any time over to our plan. So offer to um, do a quote with them. And once you've got that quote so that you can show them what the price points are, if that's something that they see as intriguing, then just encourage them to check in with their current provider to see what kind of notice is needed to be able to cancel the policy that they're on and be able to enroll with us. So that would be one thing there. Um, when I, when you say objections, um, I need a little bit more clarity on that. And Katie, um, if you're on here, you can ask me that question. Um, that was just the topic there. Another one I had was, are there types of businesses for which you'll lead with healthcare over funding? Um, for me, I personally like leading with healthcare over everything because if you become fluent with all of our products and you don't have to know all the deep, deep information, you don't have to be a product expert, but if you know enough about each of our services to have talking points about each one, um, I find that, and this is just me personally, but I find that healthcare conversation is something that affects everybody, right? So even if you're talking to business owners and you're opening the door with a conversation about healthcare, um, they're going to talk to you. If you're talking specifically about funding, a lot of times you're introducing yourself and, hey, here's what I do in the funding space. I think a lot of times we leave a lot of opportunity on the table if we don't find ourselves more well-rounded. So I would open with the healthcare conversation and ask what they're doing about healthcare, listen, and then offer if there's an opening there, offer and say, hey, I don't know if you're open to it or not, but um, my company has a healthcare platform and we're finding tremendous savings for small businesses or individuals in a group plan, you know, 4,000 a year per individual that's in a group plan or 8,000 if it's individuals. And you need to learn those numbers off of the chart that is in the agent resource center there. I'll start with the healthcare conversation and then say, and by the way, we also have a tremendous financial services platform. If you ever find yourself looking for working capital to grow or expand your business and you can't get the funding that you need at your local bank, I would love to be your go-to source there. We have one of the largest funding platforms in North America and can guarantee that we'll bring you back the best offer available. So there's my transition from healthcare conversation over to business funding. Um, if you're leading with business funding only, then again, the number of people that you talk to statistically is going to be far fewer people that want to hear about funding and will talk to you about funding than people that will talk to you about healthcare. And talking about healthcare, who's the perfect target there? Well, groups of 25 or fewer are really the sweet spot for us. Um, once you get into groups that have 50 employees or more, then you've got government mandates in place there with the ACA, where employers are required to provide insurance or pay penalties. So 
if you're sticking with 25 or smaller, most likely you're going to be able to get to a decision maker in the company. And that decision maker is someone who is um, involved with finances, finances, your human resource person. If the company's big enough that they have a human resources person, then that one's going to be a little bit harder to get into. And if the human resource person is really the only um, contact that you have, that's going to be somewhat of a challenge because a lot of times when you're talking to human resources people, they have the hat on of taking care of employees, making sure their employees are happy and satisfied. And if they're hearing positive things from their employees about their current health care provider, that they like what they have, then that human resource person may not be open to looking at alternatives uh, that are going to save the company money because human resources isn't so focused on the company's bottom line. They're focused on keeping employees happy and uh, keeping complaints down, which creates more work for them, right? Also, if we make a change, if a company's making a change on healthcare, uh, that does create more work for the human resources department. So a lot of times you're going to get pushback from those people. Whereas if you're talking to a C-level executive that is involved in what the bottom line profits are of the business, and you can talk numbers to them about the significant savings that we, they could potentially see, don't know if you're open to it or not, but we'd, we'd love to give you a free quote and cost comparison, um, then get you can get the door open that way. Plus, those smaller groups, um, they're going to be able to have a decision maker say, yes, we'd like to move forward. And it's quick to get them on a Zoom with our group team. As long as it's three or more employees, then that would go over to our group benefits team on our, on our website, employer plans. They can actually do a quote with the employer while they're on the Zoom. Preferably have a census, a list of the employees, their ages, and who's covered before the Zoom. So that can be pre-prepared. But even if it's not pre-prepared, we can pull that pricing up that quickly within that 30-minute Zoom. So those are the ones that I would target on who to approach. Um, let me see the next question. Do you bring this up when following up with people about funding? Okay, so if you've got people that are already in your funnel for funding, and I know many of you are leading with funding, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, this is my perspective on having that broader reach and not just being laser focused on one particular product. I like having a, a conversation about more than just one thing. I want people to know everything that I do. We have a business services financial platform and we have a healthcare division. Those are the two things that I do as a DAC agent, right? As a DAC agency owner. Um, but on this, if you're talking to people, if you're leading with funding and you haven't had a healthcare or an RX conversation, I encourage you to go back to them because it gives you a great reason to reach back out and say, hey, I don't believe I have I haven't talked to you in a while, and I don't believe I've mentioned this to you, but I want to make you aware that we have a healthcare benefits platform. What are you guys doing for healthcare? And get the conversation started, right? So reach back out if you have left that off of the table. And are there certain types of businesses, industries that give you the best opportunity to sign up groups or at least multiple people? And I think I just covered that with the um, sticking with groups of 25 or under, but definitely definitely under 50. Now, I have been in on a Zoom where we talked to a company that has hundreds of thousands of employees. So we can handle those groups as well. Um, Jake gave a testimonial of a company that had over 500 employees recently that they were able to move over and save enough money that they contributed to the entire family instead of just the employee only. So our clear share program is still available for those larger groups. It just sometimes takes more time or getting into the right person. Um, you know, I've got a couple of CEOs that are my clients with my limousine business that are employers of 300 person groups and we're talking healthcare. So, you know, they could potentially come on board with us as well. But those are the talking points that I wanted to cover. We're here at, at 30 minutes, and I really want to keep these Zooms 
to about 30 minutes each week to make good use of everybody's time. But I do have time for a couple of questions. There's Katie. Uh, thanks, Katie. I, I'm glad you're on here. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Hey, Ellen. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing today? I am uh, just having a great day. Hang awesome. On. Turning my system off there. My assistant was telling me it's time to meditate, and I'm, I'm not ready yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the biggest question that I keep getting from individuals, because corporations, they don't bother me. I talk to see levels of time. But the question that I wanted to ask you is, my agent told me anything outside of open enrollment is a scam. How do I combat that? Your agent, a, a DAC agent? No, um, that's the question I get a lot. It, it, the objection, the pushback from yeah, well, that, individuals. That's not true. They're misinformed, right? Right. They're misinformed. Um, can you give me a little bit more context? I thought you said the agent. Is this an insurance agent? Yes. It's an insurance agent that is telling people that, and, and actually in my local area. Do I go to the insurance agent and educate them? You can. You certainly can. You can if you're wanting to to work with them on as a referral partner. Then ask them if they're open to sitting down with you and going through a quote, so they can learn more about the program. Now, in the traditional insurance space, they're probably accurate in that statement of open enrollment periods. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of, as I referenced, the plan that I was on where I was on an indemnity plan combined with a, a PPO network and had to piece two things together. There are a lot of programs out there like that today from other mm -hmm. companies, competitors that um, have similar offerings where they're combining multiple things. In fact, our plan combines multiple things where we have our clear share. We have the, the MEC, the MEC network with our PPO uh, Clearwater has packaged all this together in in one nice package for our client. So they're just they're just not aware of what it is that we're offering. So I would take time to see if they're willing to sit down and go through a quote with you and and take them through the quote quote tool. Once they do the quote, Katie, then mm -hmm. they're going to receive an email from Clearwater where they'll be able to go over to that Clear DAC co branded page and do some research on their own. And then they can go in and get better educated about what we have to offer. But as far as if it's someone that's giving you pushback on that, if it's an insurance agent that is giving that objection, um, if they're not the person that you're trying to enroll, then I wouldn't be so worried about that. I'd be more focused on the people that you're trying to see if they're open to looking at it. But on the other side, if, the, if their insurance agent is telling them it's a scam, then um, just get more information. Anytime you're trying to debate the conversation uh, and you're on defense, then you're losing the conversation. But if you can right. feed them more information to, to educate them on why this is real and why this is a great benefit, um, maybe share some of the testimonials that I just shared. I have mm -hmm. members that enroll throughout the year. They don't have to enroll during open enrollment only. So I hope that has been helpful. Yes. The other thing I wanted to do is update you right quick. Um, okay. Girl Scouts. Okay. Let's do this one offline and stick to okay. just questions because I've got several other people hands up. Okay. Heard. No problem. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I've got Pam Warnock. Pam, can you unmute? Yes. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. I just want to make a couple comments. First of all, I have an extensive background in healthcare, so I'm able to see both sides of the coin from both being you know, running the health systems and also being a patient. And just a few things that let they just know. First of all, with the maze, um, as Ellen was kind of alluding to the name, it is a maze. With that type of product, a lot of times you'll have to go in online, fill out a long patient questionnaire, submit it, then somebody will call you back, schedule an appointment or something, you know, to that extent. I was actually going to actually use the service. And so I called the number, so I called the number and so forth. So I was waiting, you know, when the person answered to start asking me questions, to start, you know, asking for a lot of information and telling me, okay, this was a good time. The PA and a PA actually answered the phone without, you know, having to go through that process and, you know, started asking me what was wrong because he's giving her symptoms and so forth. It was able to call in medication right away. So, let your clients know, be prepared. When they call that number, they're talking directly to a medical provider. 
that's able to help them immediately. They're not going to get shuffled around and sent somewhere else. So just wanted to make that point. The other thing, like on the open enrollment, the plans vary from state to state. So I would encourage anybody that says, you know, that they're not sure if they can you know, renew now or if they got to wait to open enrollment. All they need to do is call our insurance company, find out if they're actually contractually obligated to, you know, carry out that entire term or if they're able to break that contract. That'll answer the question pretty much right away. So just wanted to throw a couple of those things in there just so, you know, agents can be aware of, you know, first of all, that the maze, that it's fast. You're going to get a, a provider right away. Um, and that can be a great selling point for the people that don't want to have to go through a long process or they don't have a lot of time. You know, they can call. If they got a five minute break, call the number, get the care they need, get a prescription called in or you know, x-ray, whatever they need to have done and be on their way. So um, those are just a few of the comments I wanted to throw in. OK, awesome. Great, great feedback there, Pam. Thank you for sharing your testimonial. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I'm going to go to Christopher, ask you to unmute. How are you doing today, Christopher Sanchez? Oh, Ellen, uh, you know, it, it seems like each time I listen to you, you're sounding so seasoned and you're so comfortable in sharing. And I, and I just really want to thank you for that. My question is regards, you had mentioned briefly, I think it was just my connection, um, uh, someone who works in Medicaid, but they also could be um, a partner in what we do. Could you touch on that real quickly? Yeah, yeah. So there are a lot of insurance agents that solely sell Medicare, not Medicaid, Medicare. They're Medicare agents, right? And if you look at your local chamber of commerce, you can do a search or you can search online for Medicare agents, right? Reach out to them because if they only do Medicare there's a season at the end of the year for open enrollment for them that they stay super busy. But the rest of the year, they may not be doing anything at all. I have an agent on my team that does Medicare and she says, I'm pretty much on vacation outside of Medicare season. So I've got her engaged with DAC, our healthcare and our X plans so that she has something else to do, but not only something else to do, they already have a ready-made base of clients that they can go back to. And uh, I was talking yesterday with my friends that sell Medicare. And we we're talking about the donut hole with their prescription mm -hmm. plans and, um, you know, un having an understanding of what people are spending out of pocket. So they said, oh, my, there's a tremendous value in this flat fee RX plan where we can take their uh, $1,800 a year that they're spending out of pocket on prescription drugs. And if their drugs are listed on that free formulary, we can get them down to $240 a year, $20 a month, right? Um, they see tremendous value in that. So now that they understand the program, they're going to go back through their existing client base and see who might benefit from the RX program or they've got notes that their Medicare client has family members that might benefit from our healthcare program. So hopefully that answers your question, Christopher. Is that oh, good? Excellent. Thank you so much, Ellen. You bet. You bet. Thank you for the question. And Janet, I'm going to ask you to unmute. How are you doing today, Janet? I'm good. I just had a quick comment of someone else to go to is at this time of year with college graduations, the adult children who are um, aging out of their parents' plan or, yeah, or millennials in general have um, um, uh, some uh, salon owner. She hires like right out of um, salon school, whatever you call it, beauty school. And mm -hmm. so her, she has she has um, employees that don't have health care. They're like, you know, the 20 somethings. Yeah. So, you know, I appreciate that, that feedback, Janet. That's a great comment. And what you're saying and the examples that I just gave, guys, the opportunity to help people and let them know what we have is all around us. You just have to look and then be willing to open your mouth and start asking the questions. What are you guys doing for health care? That conversation starter will open the door to listen. And I, I've said, I'm not selling, I'm asking that question, but I need to flip that for a second before we wrap up. And sometimes it is 
that you're selling, right? Um, you're asking the question to get the conversation started, but then when you find they have a pain point, most people do, the pain point is either they're paying too much for their insurance, they don't have coverage, or they don't like their provider because it's their customer service is difficult or whatever. So when you find that pain point, then you turn on your selling uh, selling by sharing the benefits, right? Well, I don't know if you're open to it or not, but we have a tremendous benefits platform and we're seeing an average annual savings of about $8,000 a year. Or if they don't have coverage at all, uh, show them how they can enroll in a plan now without having a life event that would qualify them on traditional insurance to be able to get started. And Katie, that can that can help you too on that. Uh, traditional insurance plans sometimes require a life event, a qualifying life event to be eligible to enroll. So um, you can use that. All right, guys, if we don't have any other questions, I'm going to wrap up here. Was there anything in the chat that needed to be addressed, Morgan? There's not, but I did post the link for the Facebook group for everyone there in the chat. Excellent. Excellent. All right, well, come on down, guys. I hope you'll make a commitment to yourself to a day and 10 in play. And I'd love to hear some stories next week of your success of committing to to a day, 10 in play. And let's see if we can't really make some impact on people's lives with their health care and their Rx and reducing their out of pocket expenses and making it affordable for them to buy their prescriptions take care of their health care needs and not have to worry about choosing between one or the other and being able to buy groceries. Thanks very much. I appreciate you being